everybody back to the stream this is nacl esports and we do want to thank you for tuning in tonight napkins in disguise running a pretty interesting roster we'll get the chance to talk about that as the game unfolds going up against curse academy here in week seven day one of nacl i am rapid I'm here with studio what do you expect to see here tonight from napkins in disguise because i am unwilling to make predictions at this point um i'm pretty pretty leaning on that too. Don't want to go too deep into the prediction game. Um, I think a relatively safe prediction might be because the team is pretty let's just say riffraff in terms of roles. They might just get treaded by the 20 minute mark. Um, a lot of the lanes are very, very punishing from Curtis Academy. For example, any Lucian, if they're not on point ready for it, uh, Hyorin and Ions are just going to get destroyed by the incredibly high damage from those two champions. Uh, Inox versus Syndra, if Inox doesn't play that matchup in a while, he might just get decimated. However, LeBlanc is still very, very uh, powerful and very efficient versus Syndra in terms of mobility and dodging, so it's going to be a pretty interesting lane. Both sides did go for the invade. It looks like Curse Academy is going to get the wards down. Same thing for Napkins in Disguise, who have already warded and are leaving that top side jungle. All right, so for right now, that w oh my goodness, we could see a little bit of an altercation going in there. Axe checking into the brush, finds a standard. There's a ward, and because the standard stuck around a little bit longer than one bad Brad did, both teams will know where the other are. And uh, so just going to back on off. It's double deep wards there for Curse Academy, only a single ward. Placed by NID at the opposing red buff and returning right back to whence from whence they came. They're going right back to the red buff and it's going to be uh, Hyorin, the uh, ex Glebe Glarbu, going into the same lane with Ions. They, they both played supports, they're both incredibly skilled supports, but has yet to see whether or not they have any synergy with each other and uh, Glebe Glarbu's uh, AD carry is still a little bit up in the air. Haven't seen that one. Uh, well, basically ever. A lot of damage put down onto Jaximus by Inox, but has it traded right back at him? I like what Jaximus did there. He actually put down the Syndra Sphere uh, where LeBlanc's teleport was, so she retreated back to it, took 93 damage for her teleportation and the good prediction from Jaximus. So now to Inox, this is the problems uh, you'll have against a Syndra in lane. She just deals so much damage and just constant harassing. You, you see Inox force back very early on, despite the fact that he's LeBlanc, but Losing the experience lead, the superior clear from Syndra just gives her that advantage early. We're saying Nick Wu try to do double goals, but he can't even do doubles because there's one bad Brad. Flash stun from Tatsolo, first blood, one bad Brad. Finds Nick Wu out in his own jungle and takes him down. Olaf is looking towards that mid lane for a gank. Syndra does get the stun though onto Inox. Can Jackson escape this? He's trying to run around the side. Undertow lands, but no follow up. Jacksmith will make it out alive. Didn't even have to burn Flash. Nubby's going to continue the chase, but won't be able to catch out on a Jacksmith. I like the choice by NID to do 2v1 lanes. Not necessarily because Ions and Hyorin are a little bit new to that duo lane, but also because it gives Tristana a lot of a very strong early game presence. The only problem is, I don't, I don't really think she really needs that. Any idea why NID might have decided to 2v1? Because now they're almost losing their bottom turret. Uh, well, the problem is that they're not confident just because they have not played together Ions and Gleep Garbu. As a bottom turret, you're right, it is going down. It looks like it might barely survive this wave and get a little bit more damage on it. Oh, but it's actually one bad Brad takes the turret shot. Could go down Undertow from Nubby Pooh Bear to grab a kill away. Now Nick Wu very, very low. Will he go down? No, he's going to go up into Repel. Another Undertow from Nubby Pooh Bear picks up a double. Nick Wu and Nubby land the cocoon. A triple kill for Nubby Pooh Bear. Rest in peace, one pad Brad, Fabi, and Satsulo all going down at the mighty axes of the, uh, I, I forget what the, the raging term berserker. is. The raging berserker. There we go. <laughs> Nubby, Pooh Bear, Triple Doran's Blades as well. All right, let's see what he can do with this. Losing the turret's actually a pretty big deal because gold, you'll notice it's still even despite the fact that Nubby Pooh Bear got that triple kill. However, Nubby, he's going to be on a tear. He's going to be on a rampage. It, well, by now, just a killing spree. One more kill for the Rampage. He needs to start showing his presence, though. Jack Smith in mid lane actually forces Inox through him with the uh, with the knockback. Inox is going to take a lot of damage. Will he go down? Not quite. Not enough man on Jack Smith, but this is the problem. Only Nubby Poobra is doing well. Nifu is level 4 now, but only has 6 CS to his aim. Despite the 3 assists, he's just he's still very far behind in gold. So they need to start making some work happen across the map. That's going to be through Nubby. That's going to be through a possible gank mid lane. 
All right, a lot of damage to come in there. Nox very low will die to Ignite. Now Jax was looking to go down there. I thought it was going to be the fourth kill for Nubby, but it actually does go over to Nick Wu, who, with that one kill and three assists, even though he does have only 10 CS, he still has a lot of gold in his pockets. Yeah, uh, that's going to be a solid pickup for him. Hopefully he can start surviving at least uh, either in the mid lane or in the bot lane. Uh, pushes towards his turret one more time. Lucian Annie is a difficult lane to survive in, especially as someone like Elise, who is relatively squishy compared to most top laners. Uh, doesn't have a whole lot of base skills, especially because they did remove the base armor and magic resist when she swaps into spider form. Uh, this entire time, though, Hyorin and Ions, we haven't really talked about them much. Um, Hyorin now at 42 CS. If you want to try and get uh, oh, Nubby. that late game, now he finds that one by Brad, forces the flash away. Now the dive attempted there onto Rux. Yorin's actually tanking the turret. I like that decision because he can flash out. Jumps in, jumps out, flashes actually to avoid the turret shot. And Ions and Yorin make it out alive just by barely the skin of their teeth. Keeping alive, and now it's going to be the dive. Nick Wu sends a spider underneath the turret. Actually, he's still taking up the turret shot. It's going to repel the drop. Aggro comes back down. Will he have the damage? Last auto attack from Nick Wu. Picks up a kill. Will the minions get revenge? Yes. One bad Brad grabs the kill right back onto Nick Wu. A one for one. And Nubby Pooh Bear is farming behind two turrets in the top lane as NID with a little bit of a makeshift roster are crushing through this early game. Nubby's waiting for the next wave. I mean, there's not a whole lot that can stop him. He is level 6, he's a level 6 Olaf, doesn't have flash available, but with that triple Doran's Blade, no one's going to be able to duel him. However, the bottom turret's about to go down, which means two tier, uh, turrets have been sacrificed. The um, inner turret now gone in the bot lane. That's actually a very big deal because it gives a lot more control, a lot more presence. Expect Fabi and Satsula now to roam quite a bit. Nubby Pooper gets an axe onto Jackson as Jackson takes a ton of damage. Oh, it looks like they're going all the way. Nubby straight through the turret, lands another, misses the Undertow actually, but with the true damage from Reckless Swings, is now going to have to duel one bad brat in between the turret line. It's actually the Execute onto Ignite. With Annie coming in there, it's going to be way too much damage to sustain. It's a shutdown for one bad brat, picking up 500 bonus gold. 500 gold, a little bit of that money does head towards, uh, I believe, Annie as well. Syndra could not get an assist, unfortunately. But that's going to be the equalizer kill. Now look at the gold, down to 11,500 to 11,400. It's evened out. A lot of the money is still on Olaf, which is a big deal. He does need a lot of farm. Nick Ludo in danger in the mid lane. Yeah, I, was, I thought it was actually just Annie, but it's Fabi there too. And Nick Wu with a nice repel will uh, wait out that CC and at least stay safe for now, Inoxus LeBlanc has been having a little bit of an issue. There's 0 2 against the 1 and 2 for um, Jaximus, but you know, it's actually really similar. The only problem is that for Jaximus, he can build a Chalice of Harmony, gives him some extra magic resistance, and makes it a little bit harder for Inox, who, like we mentioned, is a little bit behind to get that burst damage off. But it's never necessarily LeBlanc versus is your, wait, 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 what is Big Brother doing? He just rocket jumps into Fabian Satsulo. Almost taken down. The flash comes out. He will go um, down. Decided he did not want to live anymore. Uh, Studio, please. Uh, I don't know. This is where I need some of your analytical color analysis because uh, I don't feel necessarily that as an AD carry, you should be jumping into an unwarded tri brush and uh, possibly for reasons like that. And while I am not criticizing Hyorin's plays, I'm sure there was an innovative playmaking attempt being made there that I, as only a silver play by play caster, cannot analyze. I, I feel as if there might possibly have been some negative repercussions to that decision. He knew some one was in the bush, but it was actually a some two, and because of that, he just got decimated. He, he thought he might be able to catch out Satsula on his own, deal a lot of damage. Tristana with uh, the Buster shot at level six, you know, can deal quite a bit of burst damage and easily pick up a support. The problem is, it wasn't just a support. There was an AD carry hanging out nearby, and Fabi just completely wrecked her. I mean, if Tristana doesn't have an escape uh, option because the rocket jump is on cooldown, she tends to be very, very easy to catch. It's easier when she rocket jumps herself directly into your support in AD carry. When when um, Nubby Pooh Bear was trying to give Inox over the blue buff, the blue buff actually stealthed. It became invisible because it was in the bushes and was not moving anywhere or attacking. It was just kind of like there. And so it took Inox like five spell rotations to take it down. It is back in the mid lane. A little bit of pressure as the wave shoved in at him. Uh, Undertow lands at long range. Now Nubby gonna chain the Undertow. Flashes in onto Jackson. It's the burst damage to come back. Inox somewhat unnecessarily gets back into range and makes that a 1v1, a 1 for 1. A lot of pressure down in the bottom lane once again as Hyorin and Ions push on to their second outer turret of the game. That is the damage of Syndra. It's only an 800 gold difference, but Syndra 
because she can build some magic with this, is very survivable versus LeBlanc at this point. And if LeBlanc ever gets hit by one or two spells, the burst combo from Syndra, when it does follow up, it, it's very, very likely to land that kill. So LeBlanc needs to get the silence on first before she can really commit to anything. One bad Brad, though, might be in a bit of danger mid lane. Yeah, there's actually an Ignite through the turret, but I don't think Nikwu is really going to go dive that. Uh... Undertow does start to clear out the minion wave, and once again, Nubby farming behind the turrets. I, I feel like this is going to be a trend that we're going to see a lot tonight, Studio, but unsure. We're going to get the knock up. The dunks down onto Nick Wu. He's going to have to repel out there, but he's stunned. He can't repel. And I think it might have also been on cooldown, but either way, let me check that out. No, I don't think it was. So that was uh, a little bit of an option, not quite. Bottom lane. Rux actually having some issues as the poke damage continues, but keeping that bottom turret relatively healthy using the equalizer to clear out the wave. Inox up top lane trying to hold the turret versus Fabi. The problem is Inox has to use his distortion to clear the wave. Uh, it is what he's maxing out first. It's a, a pretty common uh, LeBlanc build nowadays. Use it for the CS and wave clear because normally she has a lot of issues. I mean, Boomer mid lane going for Jaxmas one more time. He does land the Endertow. Oh, but a lot of damage traded right back, so I don't think Nubby is going to be too eager to go in there. Picked up a Kindle Gem after triple Dorans, so he's very heavy, heavily dedicated to this early game. Top lane and Nox, like you mentioned, trying to hold that top turret, but it's actually Rux who might go down here. He's on the run. Yorin <laughs> trying to get into the bushes. Last auto attack. Can he take it down? And the answer is yes. Rocket jumps, gets the reset, and will bounce on back out of there. I think Ions is heading for the hills and or the tri brush and try to get away from here, speeds himself away and uses the last of his mana, will avoid the knockup. <laughs> Ions on the run, can he make it all the way? I don't think he's going for a touchdown just yet, but definitely taking the scenic route here. He's, he's giving out the laughs, he knows he's probably not going to survive, he actually doesn't get hit by the CC! Juke Ion, juke! Oh, he does nope. however waste a significant amount of time. That was an extra 20 or so seconds where he could have been dead by then, but instead one bad Brad had a waste of time chasing him around, uh, just walking back to his own turret. So in the end, not, not the best situation to die. It's actually Inox gonna get stunned by Sapulo. Gonna get blown up! Inox, where did you go? <laughs> I'm not, I was about to... I was about to talk about how Inox's passive was going to prevent him from getting bursted down. Didn't even get popped there, so uh, his mirror images are gonna stay Completely, uh, completely, I don't know, together, non shattered. To Terrifying. Raging Berserker there in the middle lane. Damage down onto Fabi. Blown apart as Nick Wu picks up a kill. Now it's going to be Nubby right on the Tatsulo. Probably should have targeted Jaximus, but there's the burst coming out as Rux will pick up the kill onto Nick Wu. Makes it a one for one, so I guess, I guess you can say that's worth it in the long run as Nox responds. I guess that makes it a two for one. But even still, pressure there on to the middle lane Nubby. Gonna try to use the Undertoes and the Glitter Lances to clear out that wave. And the damage down through the turret, engaged through by one bad Brad. Ion's barely alive. Can he make it all the way? The answer is no. Rocket jump in from Hyorin. Grabs one. Can he find another? Yes, he can. It's actually the shutdown from Nubby Pooh Bear in the first kill for Nox. So. Support Tristana being pretty good, 2-1-2, two, and two, but kills definitely starting to stack up on a Nubby Pooh Bear and Nick Wu. And there goes Hyorin. Hyorin does get hit. Actually, no, that's LeBlanc trying to keep him alive. Can he do it? Not quite. One bad Brad now in a 2v1. His, his standard is up in a couple seconds. He might be able to get over the wall and survive. Oh, Silence goes out there. Very, very good idea, but it's flashed over the wall from Minox. Does he actually have the damage? He's actually forced to almost kill one bad Brad with nothing but auto attacks. Does finally find the ult cooldown and... Oh, the Jukes! Can he find the escape from the Dragon Pit? I think he's kind of stuck in there. So he will ignite, or he will recall in there. Ignite goes down onto Fabi. Won't be enough to kill him as the Undertow did miss. Fabi makes it out. So does Inox. And all over the map, I have no idea what's happening. I feel like we just need to spend like 10 minutes discussing something deep and color related, like some strategy, because it's been action nonstop across the map. All right, all right. So, Navigants in Disguise, they, they don't have the, the strongest strategy for this lineup because, well, they didn't plan for this to happen. So, what they're kind of doing is sort of just going for pickups and just mashing their team into curse. The thing is, Nubby Pooh Bear is so far ahead. 6 one two, he does a ridiculous amount of damage. Nubby Pooper can actually do that. He can mash his face into someone like Jackson, someone like One Bad Brad, and he will not go down instantly. The problem is that the rest of the team will go down instantly. Like, Inox is incredibly squishy. Kyorin is very easily picked off as well. The only person that can really survive <laughs> is going to be uh, Nick Wu with the Repel. Okay, I thought Nubby had just stolen away the- wait, yeah, Nubby did steal the red- the, the blue buff away from Inox with uh, the true damage from Reckless Swings, so... 
Dragon, in the meantime, will go down there to Curse Academy, or as uh, they pick up a global objective and are a turret ahead at the same time. So Nick Wu gonna have to watch himself there in the mid lane as another very strong push now coming into the mid lane for Curse Academy. Turret will fall fourth turret of the game for Curse Academy. Keep in mind, it took down two bottom lane earlier on while all that shenanigans was going on up between the top two turrets. So. Uh, continue to get their farm up gold count, gold lead rather, up to about 2,000 for Curse A, but a counter push coming mid for NID. Uh, NID, they're trying to look for some sort of opening. A turret push is relatively safe because Hyorin can auto attack the turret from such a long range, but at the same time with the initiation from Syndra, very importantly, getting hit by a stray ball when she does land a scatter of the weak stun, it's going to be just devastating to Hyorin if he does get hit. And the possibility of just, you know, getting jaxed or flashed, uh, flash tibbers, flash incinerated from Annie means that they're, they're very, very wary and very cautious about going for these pushes. Curse Academy, on the other hand, the hard initiation is going to be an Elise stun. Um, a Lulu ultimate on a LeBlanc or a least repelling into the enemy team. Like, there's not a lot of good options for a strict hard initiate. So, Nubby Poobar, like I said, he can just mash his face into Curse Academy. <laughs> and he'll probably kill someone. <laughs> but the problem right. is, he'll most likely go down in response. Group up mid for Curse A, but I feel like with uh, both of the carries off to the side lanes, there's actually going to be the Shirelius, the, the dash in there on it. That's a little Nubby Pooh Bear is going all in for just the support. Gets dunked on. The Cataclysm actually traps Satsalo in there. Makes him go down to Nubby Pooh Bear. There's giant growth as well. Double kill for Rux as he's going to chase in there. Glitterland slows, but the knockout lands onto Ion. Going to be a red buff slowed as well. The flash in there. Electro Harpoons taking him down. And one bad Brad will grab the kill on to Ions, so a nice kill there on Tatsalo for Nubby Pooh Bear, but uh, lost a little bit more in exchange, and this would probably be a good time to start talking about some item builds, because we have a Shirelia's Reverie for Olaf, a Magi Soul Stealer on Inox, as well as um, a Pickaxe and Static Shiv first, the build for Hyorin, so I'm not sure I would necessarily have thought of building this way, but then again, I didn't get a triple kill at like five minutes into the game on Olaf, so I'm just going to let NID do what they do and see how it works out. Well, th that is actually, I believe, the OGN style, um, at least that's what we've seen recently on Nubby Pooh Bear. What the Reverie lets him do is A, get into the fight. That is something crucial on Olaf. You need to actually get to a target. Uh, he's not running Ghost, so Flash is not the best initiation tool. Um, well, in this case for Olaf, because you want to stick on someone too. So the Reverie is helping make up for that, the fact that he doesn't have Ghost. Uh, the problem with some of the other builds, for example, the Soul Stealer is on Inox because Inox just has not been farming very well. Um, he's had very little time early on to farm, and now it's kind of hard for him to make up, the f make up that difference because he's constantly grouped. So that's just an efficient item if you can ever pick up some kills, which may happen, may not. I'm not putting my money on it. The culling off onto those creeps, but Nubby Pooh Bear doesn't even care. He's just going to go Shirelius right through the turret. Damage onto one bad Brad, but everybody caught up in the Cataclysm! And the rush as well, Tatsalo goes down, one bad Brad to follow, only losing Ion so far, but all of a sudden, Nubby Pooh Bear, Nick Wu off of a huge equalizer, somewhat inaptly named, is it all but it's uh, won the team fight there for Curse Academy, not really equalizing things as the case may be. Curse A pushing down after a 3 for 2 exchange on to the first base turret of the game, if they decide to go all the way down there. Could look for a push bottom lane, but aren't really going to find all that much in the NID jungle. All right, so the mash face into enemy team strategy, it is no longer working, unfortunately. Nubby Pooh Bear, he had it going for him before, but uh, with Adoran's Blade truly is built, he is relatively squishy. He just He's immune to CC. That is the big Olaf advantage, but he's still pretty easy to kill just because he doesn't have a lot of mitigating stats like armor or magic resist, and the HP he's getting is still relatively low. Triple Doran's Blade Reverie is a lot of HP, but compared that to, let's say, a Randuin's or a Sunfire Cape, it's not that much more. Actually, I, like I believe it's a little bit less. Yeah, it looks like it's Baron time, Studio, or at least clearing things out there. I was almost sure an idea was just going to go for it, but probably not going to go for that just yet. Uh, yeah, like you said, he got so far ahead, Nubby Pooh Bear did on Olaf, that he went the Triple Doran's Bengi style build, but the only problem is that, like you said, it gives him a lot of flat stats as far as HP is concerned, but he's picking up magic resistance from no magic mantles, not from Negatron cloaks. There's no armor in that build at all. So even though Fabi isn't like snowballing crazily hard, he's still going to be dealing a lot of damage that uh, Nubby Pooh Bear won't have any way to resist. He's going to get passive resistances from his ultimate, but he loses those when he turns it on and goes into Berserker Rage. 
Yeah, th that is the problem. Like, he, he does get decent mitigation, the 20 armor and magic for this, but when he goes in for the fight, he has to press R, or if not, Jackson's will hit him with Scatter of the Week. One bad Brad will land the flag and drag. Uh, Satsula will hit a stun. But if he just kind of walks at someone with the ultimate up, Curse Academy realize, all right, let's just kill him. He's, he's squishy at this point. One bad Brad just walking to Nick Wu, though, takes a lot of damage in response. There's a cocoon there, knock up actually by one bad Brad on a Nick Wu, but the engagement in mid lane and Nox just blowing them apart. Babby will take out Nubby Pooh Bear, like we mentioned, no armor there. And Nox gets back in there for another kill. And now it's Rux chasing on to and Nox. Some mirror images is pop slow down there from Ions. Won't let Rux chase on for the kill. Fabi flashing after Hero and picks up the one for one at long last. And Ion now 1v1ing Rux, or at least uh, as Nick Wu is now running away. Electro Harpoons will continue to land. Spiderling backwards. Will we see the execute damage? Spider form, where are you at? It's Nick Wu trying to pick up the kill, but Rux, unstoppable, takes him out at the very last second. Now, Iona, or Ions, rather, chasing onto Rux. Can't quite find the picks, not helpful enough will allow Rux to escape alive, but crazy engagements right back and forth, and even team fight nonetheless, and, and Ox starting to get those stacks, man. Starting to get those stacks, he's now at seven, so the item is efficient. Th that is a big deal, if he can maintain those stacks, he's probably at a point now, especially with that large auto uh, uh, completed, where he can blow up someone like Fabi, someone like Satsulo, someone who hasn't bought any magic resist. Syndra is going to be just out of range, most likely. However, he can still 1v1 most people, uh, the exception of being one bad Brad, who can just kind of escape a bad situation. But, because if he can chain his silence, silence the wall together, if he can chain the chains of, I want to say corruption, but I know that's Varys' ultimate, the ethereal, ethereal chains, he can actually CC people and just kind of fight around that for quite some time. Dragon does go to Curse Academy, the R ahead by 4,000 gold, but the team fight and assassination from uh, Navigans in Disguise, it's really starting to show itself now. Yeah, absolutely. An idea actually starting to come together. There's the Hex Drinker buy for Nubby Pooh Bear. Traditionally, that's more of a top lane item, but this is not a traditional game, so you can see anything anywhere right now. And I like that choice because not only does the bonus attack damage amplify the true damage from Reckless Swing, which was the move that Nubby Pooh Bear chose to max second for going the Vicious Strikes, um, which is pretty standard, but you don't really get as much use out of that as you used to unless you build bonus AD, and that's what he's going to get from the Hex Drinker, as well as turning that uh, Null Magic Mantle into something that's really going to help protect him against Jaximus, who's really been blowing him up in these fights. The key is that Fabi has to die fast in a fight. Uh, Jarvan does a decent mm -hmm. amount of phys physical damage, especially with the passive, but the real finisher, the real physical damage is Fabi. So if they can take out Fabi quickly, Navigants in Disguise, they have a lot of magic resist. The Abyssal Staff, uh, or Abyssal Scepter, finished on Elise now. It's actually Nubby Pooper oh, for the engagement. Oh, right there on to Jaxmas. Oh my goodness, and Nox just blows him up. And now it's a very large Nubby Pooh Bear. Tries to dash in. There are a massive equalizer coming in from the back. And Nox will have to run away. And Rux just blowing NID apart. I, I don't know if they need to really rename the equalizer because it's just completely turning these fights around, making them as one-sided as you can possibly get. Nubby goes in there, finds a pick on to Jaximus, and then as soon as Rux shows up, he just lays it down, throws the pineapples out there, and is just way too effective at dominating the very engage heavy roster there for an ID, who, with a two to one disadvantage, will lose their last outer turret of the game as Curse Academy take it down. Earth Academy, of course, uh, enjoying that push quite well. That was a 4v5 was a big problem for uh, Navigants in Disguise. Hyoran just wasn't there. They, were, they, were, they saw that as a big pickoff moment, and then they just kept going. So that is Nubby Pooh Bear's issue right now. He won in, he got the kill, then he got stuck in the equalizer and just kind of rolled over and died. Because once the ult falls off, once he's taken some damage, he's in easy cleanup, easy pickup. Nubby Pooh Bear gonna walk into a bush. Oh, Nubby, up, so. no, don't do it. Walks right into the bush, face checks into four members of Curse Academy. And if they aren't gonna do bear now, actually, oh, Ions, the rest of NID trying to get in there. Dunks down onto Nick Wu, Hyorin, and Inox. Three-man Cataclysm now falls. Inox going godlike, grabbing stacks on stacks. The, re the repel from Nick Wu takes him down and just in time to pick off Satsulo. And it's the fight turned around. It's a double kill coming out for Nick Wu. But now it's Hyorin and Nick Wu running for their lives. Jaximus full health. If he gets cocooned right now, he's dead. But he has a lot of outplay potential as Nick Wu, Hyorin still trying to run away. Rux 
Misses first Electro Harpoon. Can he find the second one? There's the cocoon landing on a Jax with so much damage coming down from just that Elise's Miracle, or not Elise's Miracle, the uh, Leandris Torment. Got the wrong proper noun in there, but now with Jaxmas very low, where the plays, Yorin? I'm waiting for a Tristana to just rocket jump over everyone, but I'm just gonna play it safe for now, take it back to base, and after all is said and done, Inox finishes, starts and finishes that fight with only seven stacks. Yeah, this has been just complete hectic engagements, complete hectic fights. This is not bad if they can actually keep the fights equal for Napkins and Disguise because this gives a chance for Inox to be able to blow up more and more people. Not only Jacksmith, uh, very, very squishy, actually had, had to buy a Negatron cloak just to stay alive. And of course, Hyoran gets closer and closer to that Lake in Tristana. Um, you can see a lot of magic resist coming of, from Curse Academy. They have a Negatron on Rumble. They have the, the Negatron on Syndra. Now a um, Spectre's Cal already finished on Lucian. Like, they realize that Inox has reached that point of the game where if you do not build magic resist, you will die. And very safely and very smartly, they are building uh, just defensive items to, to mitigate that. There's also so much magic damage from Nick Wu, from Inox as well. They have to be very wary of that. Yeah, Inox went godlike in that last fight, and after having w what I would describe as a fairly rough laning phase, uh, he's, he's managed to pull it back, man, and the, the Magi is by, it's kind of desperate when you buy it when you're behind, but completely paying off. There's going to be the Shrelia's Reverie as well as the Whimsy trying to get in there. Nick Wu below half health before the fight even starts. The Equalizer down, completely zones the entirety of NID, and now just magic damage blowing them apart. Inox tries to get it onto Jacksonus. There's the shutdown taken down for Nubby Pooh Bear. It's actually a Inox that will pick up one kill, but Satsolo to even the score. Now Inox very low, tries to escape with the Glitter Lance, actually couldn't make it out of there. The calling and long range, and it will be Fabby to take him down. There can be no entrance without the blessing of the Gatekeeper, and there is no Gatekeeper but Fabby. The cooling has officially cooled this game. That's two games so far we've seen Lucian. Two games so far we've seen the cooling pick up kills. Nice to see that actually happening. Nubby Poober is a sole survivor now. Four napkins in disguise. You can try and hold this off, but the problem was that last fight, the equalizer from Rux was able to split up the team enough and delay the fight so much that Jackson was able to pick up a kill. Rux was able to survive long enough that one bad Brad, Fabi, and Satsulu came in and just tore napkins in disguise to pieces. That middle inhibitor turret will survive as death timers are actually still pretty short. We're not even at the 30 minute mark rapid. That's how, how action packed this game is. We're at 57 kills total. <laughs> 57 kills. That is more than one kill a minute. That's actually more than two kills a minute um, in this game as the teams are just whomping on each other nonstop. This game is like the minion's best friend, uh, or at least NID ours. They haven't been killing a whole lot of them, but they have made up for that. Oh, Nubby Pooh Bear throws down the Shirelias. Yorin trying to get on there. A lot of crits through the first thing. It blows him up, but now Jaximus about to meet the same fate as Inox stacking up to eight. Medjai's Soul Sealer stacks there. Ions will die in the background to Rux, who is just... I, I don't even know. Rux is just so... He's going to throw down the Equalizer, but Nubby is just going to ult right on top of his face. Nick Wu tries to come in there for some damage, but Nubby is so strong right now. Misses the Undertow, and now in a 1v4 situation, somewhat unable to pick up a kill. And while I blame that totally on him, it is going to be a little bit rough to make that happen. And that is going to turn it around for a one for four exchange. I think Jackson is going to be okay with that one. Can we see some plays happen though? Uh, Inox, he can I burst believe. someone down. Do you, yeah, you got to believe in the Inox right now. He goes forward, he goes back out. The distortion realizing that Baron not even close to dead. Actually, this Baron relatively dangerous. Uh, they will have yeah. their suit, but it's not going down quickly. So Fabi is at full HP. All right, tries to get in there and steal it, but Anox just goes down. The Baron, like you said, nowhere close to being dead. Now without the threat of Anox to take it down, it will go over to Curse Academy with the respawn there of only Jack Smith's good guys, Fabi Tatsalo and One Bad Brad, wait for him to survive. But now Yorin coming in. Tristana, can you turn it around? There's actually the Buster Shot to blow any up before it even starts. There's gonna be the rocket jump away. Yorin dodges out one. Can he dodge the other? Yes. Trying to get away from there. No Electro Harpoons just yet. Nick Wu, round from the side, will throw down a Repel. Dodge out most of the damage from Jaximus and back on off for now. It's only going to be four Baron buffs. The Satsolo did die, but a nice kill picked up for Hyorin. It, it was something, you know, it's a consolation prize. They also didn't lose Hyorin. He did end up blowing Barrier, which is a bit unfortunate because he really didn't need to, actually. The Barrier didn't block any damage. But hey, they got something out of that. I mean, Curse Academy, what's been driving them is that they're winning every fight by one or two members for the most part. 
Uh, there were, I believe, a couple almost uh, four for ones or three for ones. But generally, it's been the fights have been equal. The issue is, if they're surviving with one or two members, that gives them more time to farm, more time to push down turrets. That's why they're up three turrets. That's why they're up dragons. Now up a bear. Now Cinder going to be going down, though. And it does look like the fight ensues, and it will be only a Nox, the casualty there. Trades one for one, so I, I don't even know. I, Syndra, I, I don't know what's happening right now, because I, I almost want to go back and watch that, because I think there's actually a bug with Syndra where, some, due to the way that her skills come out, they can actually one-shot somebody just instantly. I, I, I don't know if that's necessarily what happened, because Jaximus does have some WTF damage up his sleeve, but I don't know, man, a Nox kind of blew up there. I mean, right now, Inox has, let's see how much HP he has, he has 1500 HP. Jack Smith, with, with his full combo, or just the full ultimate with one orb down, is doing about a thousand damage. And actually, initiation in the mid turret, can they pick up kill? Oh my goodness, going in there, right underneath, absolutely everything. The equalizer goes down, turret to fall as well. Yorin stays alive, Inox will respawn. We are going to see a base defense here, but not actually, as the inhibitor goes down. Really uncontested there is Inox. Tries to chase off for a pick. Ions was about to flash over that wall there for a second. Couldn't quite make it. Push down the mid lane just to clear out some minions. You can see Nick Wu all the way up top. Doesn't even want anything to do with the rest of his team. And now the rest of NID actually going up there to join Inox for a blue buff. I feel like defending their bottom base turret could possibly be more important of an objective. And now Ions, he knows what's up. He's down there to try for the defense. There's going to be the home guards coming out. Nubby Pooh Bear wants to get in, eats an Electro Harpoon, and will back on off for now. But uh, boy Jackson got was... blocked by the minions! Um, he got blocked by the minions! He couldn't walk um, out of there, so he just got trapped and died. That is fantastic. Dyrus, is that you? I'm not sure, but the culling to come out. Fabby takes a lot of burst damage, jumping in there, but what on earth? Jackson is just blowing Inox apart. The dunk down onto Inox will take him out. He and Ions are down, and Equalizer right on top of Yorin, not able to get off of that in time. Nubby running in, 1v3, not able to find a kill, and 4 for 2. Team fight win for Curse Academy. This game might be ending with no more deaths. If so, we're going to finish this game off with a total of 72 kills in 32 or so minutes. Um, there are members up for Napix in Disguise in about 20 seconds. Nick, we're going to try and hold this. He might be able to pick off Rux, but the thing is, Jack Smith has that Banshee spell. He actually is hit by the stun. 73. 73 kills in this 32 minute game. Enox up in 5. Ion's up in 5. Can they hold this? It's going to be tough. All right, two seconds. Inox is just now respawning. The next is under fire. Inox trying to get in. The wait, what? Whoa, wait. Wait, Inox wait, 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 wait. He just exploded. Jackson has just blew him up in one skill. He ran out of base, died instantly. The next is to fall. And I, I don't even know what I, this is. Literally, okay. there might have been a bug. There might okay, have been a bug. you know. I'd love to attribute it to just massive skill and the raw power, the unleashed power nonetheless, that only Jack Smith has to offer. But I'm just, like, let's just be real, Inox died pretty quickly, so that's going to be the game. And while I will be analyzing this in my brain for years to come, hopefully you guys enjoyed watching Napkins in Disguise take on Curse Academy in NACL. I, 